Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. Welcome to my channel. My name is Maika. Today we are going to be re reorganizing these bookshelves. Oh yes, I thought, I, I already told you I was hoping to do this and I just didn't really have the energy to do it. But now that I have a plan, because this was part of the issue, I didn't really have a game plan yet. Um, because I have had the same sort of organization for my bookshelves for absolutely years and it kind of works. But I kind of feel like I've got a lot of books on these shelves that I would still like to read and I don't get to them because I don't really see them, you could say. So I felt that this, this just needed a big old revamp so that I can start finding things that I feel excited about again. I don't necess necessarily need to read, buy new books because there's plenty on these shelves I haven't read. In case you don't know, every once in a while I will go through the shelves and I get rid of all the books that I've read that I know I like, but if I feel like I'm never going to reread them, I just get rid of them. Unless they have a very pretty cover, then I do like to keep them around, but I tend to not keep around books that I've read. Unless they are my favorites, unless they are pretty. So if it's a book that was like a three-star read for me, I'm not gonna sit on it for the rest of my life. And I definitely bought a lot of books in the past year. Uh, I think year, year and a half. I did a lot of book buying and not so much book reading. So I know that I just need to get to these books and read them so that I can like in a year time or so, I can declutter some more and make room for more books. That's sort of that's sort of the way I do it. By the way, when I declutter books, I give them away to friends, family, and I've got a thrift shop nearby that accepts books in all languages. And uh, I hope that way I can contribute a bit to my community to hopefully get, get books out there that people would want to read. Um, there are a few books today that I know I'm going to get rid of because they have been sitting on my shelves for a while and I've actually already, well, they haven't been rehomed yet. They are still sitting on the shelf, but I have a perfectly fine home for some of these books already. So we are going to be reorganizing these. They are currently, you're looking at like classics over here. Then this middle section is pretty much all bookshelves with a color theme also down here. So we've got the blue shelf here and then all the way here, <laughs> here, I should say, we've got book series. And I do have a couple of like themed shelves already. So I've got my classics. I've got Dutch books all the way towards the top. And that's sort of what I wanna do now. So all of these colored shelves, I wanna reorganize. Uh, the color shelves are mainly like standalones and uh, like first books in series, so I don't have any other books. And then I want to reorganize those according to genre. So I definitely want to make shelves for adult fantasy, YA fantasy, historical fiction, literary fiction. I think that those are like the main four. <laughs> um, so I'm not sure yet how it's going to pan out. We're going to have to see. Um, but I'm going to keep the series together. I've already decided because it just works. It's just that that side needs a really good rejig because I've read quite a few of these series. And now what I have is that I have unread and read series on one shelf. And sometimes the red part takes up so much space that I sort of forget to look at that shelf to find books I want to read. So again, they need a reshuffle so that I can easier get to the books I haven't yet read and put the books that I did already read and love towards the like <laughs> the edges of the bookshelf that are a bit harder for me to reach. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to take you along. What I will be doing is I'm going to move you back so that you just have a wide angle and I'm just going to time lapse you through me reorganizing the shelves. I will not be touching the classic uh, section all that much because that I feel is fine. Perhaps if I find some classics that are still stuck in the colored sections, I might want to put in here somehow um, because I do want to shuffle things around a little bit, but not too much. But before we do that, let's talk about some books I'm going to declutter. Okay, so before you come for me, when you see the books I'm getting rid of, please, please calm down before you start judging and typing on that keyboard like, whoa, how can you get rid of that? Because I am going to get rid of some very beloved books. Some for obvious reasons. <laughs> first up, I'm going to get rid of the first three books in the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children's series by Ransom Riggs. I read the first one, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. 
And with this book, I found that the premise of the book, which is a story woven alongside of these like vintage pictures, was a lot better than the story itself. <laughs> so the story didn't grab me. By the time I read the first one, I already owned the next two and I just never really got stuck into those because I felt like the first book just was a bit like story-wise, not something I wanted to continue. I think the idea behind these books is super cool, really unique, um, but I don't need to have this sitting around my shelves because I know I won't reread it, even though these are also very pretty, which is why they were sort of hanging around my shelves, but I just, I just feel it's time. I might just keep the first one because I did read that one, uh, but the other two have not been read. But if I donate this, I might as well just give this away to the thrift shop, all three together, and give someone a chance to get stuck into these. I think that may be fun for someone who's a lot younger than me, because this is definitely more like middle grade leaning YA, I feel. So uh, I hope I, I, there are kids in my neighborhood who might like, <laughs> who might like this. Actually, I can stick these in the little t free library. We have a little like birdhouse kind of thing uh, in the park near my house where you can just leave books for other people to take. So I think I'll just stick them in there because maybe someone can work on their English while they're in lockdown. That could be a good one, yeah. Um, then, this, this is one that people are going to yell at me, I'm going to get rid of this book. Um, the Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. Brandon Sanderson is very beloved and I've never read anything by him yet. 2021 is going to be the year I make a change in that situation, but I'm first going to read his uh, Mistborn trilogy, because that I think is the one everybody raves about. Way of Kings is the next series, I believe, in the same universe, but set in a different time period within that universe. And for the Mistborn trilogy, I have the UK covers. This is the American paperback cover, which is just, I don't know. I shouldn't have bought this, but it was cheap and cheerful. I was like, oh, I can try a Ben and Sanderson book. And I bought this before I had completely completed the Mistborn trilogy to have all three books there. And I wasn't aware that this was such a different edition. So uh, I, I just bought the wrong thing. So I'm getting rid of this, not because I don't want to read it, but I want to repurchase this in the UK covers. And then this, I believe, actually comes in two books which is going to make it such more, just much more manageable to read it. So I know I won't read a book that's over like 1200 pages in this really dinky small edition. I just won't. I won't enjoy holding this the entire time. So I shouldn't have bought this edition. I just shouldn't have. And then <laughs> another very popular book I'm getting rid of is Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. And again, this has nothing to do with the book itself, but it has everything to do with the edition that I own. This is a bind up of all three books into one big giant cover. It's got absolutely atrociously small letters. It's got, I think they've crammed all three books in just under a thousand pages. I know I won't read. I've tried reading this three times and it's just, it's so big and bulky. I don't want to get to it. So you know what I already did? I already repurchased a box set edition of all three books in separate editions and it should arrive this afternoon. So Lord of the Rings, don't worry about it. I've never read the whole thing, but I really, really want to. And I just find that because I've owned this book, like this is the movie tie-in cover. So I'm pretty sure this came, this came out when like the, the movies were out. So I think I'm, I, I probably purchased this when I was still a student. <laughs> so I've had this for more than a decade and I just don't get round to it because of the edition it's in. So I bought the box set with the three books so that hopefully I can finally read The Lord of the Rings. And then another series, well, it's, it's all by the same author, Rick Riordan, um, the sort of follow-up to the Percy Jackson stories, you could say. So I believe this is called The Heroes of Olympus series, and then I have the first book in the Trials of Apollo trilogy, I believe. And I read the first one of this five book series called The Lost Hero, and I just felt it was Percy Jackson, but with slightly different characters. So I didn't really enjoy it all that much. I read the first book. I know I won't, I don't want to continue the rest. 
I'm not a huge fan of the portrayal of Apollo in the series, so I don't, I know I won't be getting to this. And I actually borrowed, or lent, I should say, lent my Percy Jackson series, including the two spin offs about gods and heroes that he also wrote. I lent it to a friend of mine. Uh, their daughter is exactly the right age to be reading these, and she absolutely adored Percy Jackson. So they sent this to me so I could have these on my shelves for my bookshelf tour. And I was like, well, the trade-off is going to be that when I reorganize my bookshelves, you are going to be getting those other Percy Jackson related books that I'm no longer interested in reading. So I, I have a little box set aside so I can take these to the post office and send these to my friend's daughter so she can hopefully enjoy this for some time to come because she is an avid rereader as well. Uh, apparently she she read these Percy Jackson books like five times since the summer since I gave them to her. So um, I know I will be bring, bringing these to a very good home, a very good home indeed. And then she can continue the story that she loves. So um, that that's just what I'm going to be doing. Um, I will be keeping my original Percy Jackson series. So those are the books that I am going to get rid of. So it's a mini declutter. I don't think there's anything on these shelves that I necessarily want to get rid of. I might add to the pile as we go along, but it's not going to be like last year where I did a major declutter and I got rid of like a hundred books. It's not going to be one of those. <laughs> it's not going to be one of those. Yeah, so this is what I'm going to be passing along to other people. And now it's time to reorganize these shelves. All right, I think we've got the best angle this way. Got myself a cup of tea. I've got my little step ladder right here. Let's uh, give this this thing a rejig. Right, so I moved all of my Dutch books to one shelf, even the children's books. It was a bit of a puzzle, but it worked out. So I'm happy about that. Step one is done. Right, so I've cleared a, a few of the shelves, so I'm making one shelf for adult fantasy. Then I've got one for YA fantasy, which is the one at the top right here. This is going to be the adult felt fantasy shelf. I'm going to see if I have enough books to create a sci-fi dystopian kind of shelf. I think I might, so I'm going to try that. I'm going to have like a gothic shelf. Um, I, I didn't really count how many shelves I have to <laughs> disperse, but uh, I've got literary fiction, which is right now living right here, but as you can see, it's a lot. So I think that's going to be at least two shelves, maybe even three. Then we've got some historical fiction, ooh, right here, that little stack there. I've got a lot of Stephen Fry and Neil Gaiman, so I need to figure out what to do with that. And then I sort of have mythological retellings as like a subsection of my historical fiction. And we've got some magical realism and then sci-fi dystopian. Oh, and I found a sprinkling of other sort of um, like classics that I could add to the classic shelf. So that's something that we might be doing. And I found a sprinkling of detective stories. So I'm not sure yet whether I want to put those together or not because the problem is that I don't think I will have enough of those. So I may just have to put those with other parts. But uh, yeah, so far I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight shelves, and I've got one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight different categories as well. So I should be able to do one shelf per category, but I'm not sure whether that's going to fit with the number of books that I have in each one. So uh, I'm, I'm first going to clear out the middle bit because that's the most. And then I'm just going to put everything on the shelf where I think I'm going to put it and then I'm going to figure out how to put it on the shelf. I think that's a good idea. Okay, so we figured it out. I've got one more book to declutter, which is The Third Man by Graham Greene. I read it in 2020 and it was so-so. It's not something I need to keep. So uh, I wasn't aware that this was actually a script. <laughs> so I read it, it was enjoyable, but because it's written as a script, you just miss a lot in the story. So going to get rid of that. Um, but that's it. Like, I don't want to get rid of anything else. <laughs> and I have decided to not put detectives as a separate category because there wasn't enough so I've sort of put those in their respective categories so what we have right now is up yonder we've got YA fantasy adult fantasy historical fiction uh, magical realism and mythology no gothic fiction like gothic -y, darker tales and mythology retellings then we have a shelf with magical realism and like my Neil Gaiman and Stephen Fry stuff, which the Stephen Fry stuff doesn't really go, but the Neil Gaiman stuff most certainly does. Like, Neil Gaiman always bridges the gap for me between what's real and what's, what's magic, so I think it can go there. And then I've got some books which are over here, which are some literary fiction that I would like to fit into onto that shelf somehow. And then I've got two shelves for literary fiction, like more modern literary fiction, because I think I've got classics, and then we've got literary fiction underneath it, and then I've got some space for sci-fi, which is not going to cover an entire shelf. So again, I need to figure out whether I want to keep it that way. But I think I'm just going to get started and start seeing if I can put things on the shelf, which I'm probably going to do by size and by height of the book, um, because then it just looks a little bit more aesthetically pleasing than uh, if I go by author because then everything is a different size and since these are the main feature in my living room and now they're not going to be color-coded anymore I don't want it to be too messy so I do want to put different sizes together so let's reorganize some shelves
Mystery Fiction section is done. Yay! So Like I've got, I've reorganized the, the colored shelves for the most bit, which I'm now really digging. Um, but I do have two shelves that are very, very full, which is my adult fantasy shelf and also my historical fiction shelf. Like I had to rearrange some things. Like, oh, is this really historical fiction? Because you can very easily put it in a different category. But yeah, as you can see, um, those two are full, filled to the brim. And uh, everything else, like some of it, like right now I have a sci-fi shelf right here. And as you can see, we've got lots of empty space towards the right. So I can always use that space to sort of deal with the overflow of other shelves. Or for instance, if I have books that I've read that I don't really care for, or maybe use that part of the shelf to create a bit of a TBR. Uh, I'm now seeing, I'm seeing opportunities here. Like I don't have to keep it like this, of course, but I'm happy with where it now stands. So let's move on to the final part, which is this shelf right here, which is all of my series. Different angle, uh, the light is coming in from that side, so it's not ideal, but this way you can see the organization of my final bookcase much, much better. So uh, I'm not going to be touching the very, very top one, because that's okay. Um, because that's just uh, like my Shadowhunter stuff, Twilight, and the Lunar Chronicles, those are all on one shelf, and that's okay. I just need to go up there. Like, I only go up there if I need to, but I definitely need to give a rejig <laughs> to everything else that's here. Because I kind of, like, these two shelves are like the ones that are easiest for me to see. So I would like to make these two shelves filled with books. Like, that I fill these with books that I haven't read, and then the bottom one and this one can be more so for, and the top one can be more like books that I did already read. So. And uh, new in, I got myself the great Game of Thrones box set. And uh, this is a, so now I can hopefully finally get to these at some point. Might be a while, but I've got them.
I finished. I found two more books to uh, get rid of. Um, these are like uh, novellas that go with certain series and this is the Unite Me, Destroy Me and Fracture Me bundle and uh, by Tara Maffey. I haven't even read the original trilogy and with Sarah J. Mass's A Court of Thrones and Ro uh, Thors and Roses, I read the original series and I really don't care about the novella. I so let me just give you a quick overview which I'm going to just shoot for, with by holding the camera in my hands. So I do apologize if it's a bit shaky. This is an overview of what it looks like now. Up top, we've got classics. I didn't touch these two shelves at all um, because they have already lived like this for a while. And then we've got a new, well, revamped classic shelves. And then we have shelf number one with literary modern fiction, you could say, which I've just kind of organized by size. These are the larger editions. And then if I have multiple editions that are the same size by the same author, then I've put those together. And then if we go one shelf down, if we go one shelf down, we get the second shelf, which are the smaller books. And here I've just stacked some more together. Right here, we've got my very sad sci-fi dystopian shelf. I cookbooks, which we haven't really touched. Um, but yeah, this is where my cookbooks live. If we stay down here for a minute, then that's just all of like my literature and dictionaries that I still have out. So a bit of nonfiction. So this is a little high up for me as well, but this is uh, my Dutch shelf. I now have put all of my Dutch books onto one shelf. And then we have my YA fantasy shelf. We have a adult fantasy shelf. And then down here, we have another really full shelf. This is my historical fiction shelf. Down here to the left, we have all of sort of my gothic-y sort of stuff. So not necessarily like scary thriller, because uh, I definitely have some thrillers in my literary fiction side. But I just decided to put things like ghost stories and vampire related stuff here. <laughs> and then off to the right, we have my mythology retellings, because I ended up figuring out that I had quite a few of those. So I've got all of my Stephen Fry ones, and then some other things that involve mythology in one way or another. They're just living their best life here. And then down here, we've got magical realism. Um, so books that have sort of like one foot in the real world and something magical as well. And then I just put my Stephen Fry and Neil Gaiman books here because, I don't know, I just have a lot of these books by these two authors, so I just kind of stack them together. And then up top, Twilight, Shadowhunters, Lunar, Lunar Chronicles. Then a shelf with all of the uh, fantasy series that I've completed. And then I've made a shelf with books that I haven't read yet. And the same goes for the next shelf down. Two shelves filled with books to read. And then this third shelf is a bit of a mismatch <laughs> of things that I've read and things that I haven't yet read, but they do fit into a similar vein. Um, but these are all like historical fiction detective novels. And then down here we have again a mixed bag of things I've read. But most of these series are, if I haven't read it, are ongoing. So for instance, the Jim Butcher Dresden Files series, I haven't read Death Masks, but I did read everything else. And from Genevieve Cogman, did I read The Secret Chapter? I don't think so. And I just got The Dark Archive, which are the last two, but I did read the rest of the series. All right, so we're looking nice and bright and shiny, but I'm still sitting on the floor here. I'm super happy with my rejig. I hope it's going to work out for me. If not, then at some point this year, I'm just going to rearrange everything back to the color-coded system that I used to have. But I'm very happy now. I hope I'll be able to find the stuff that I haven't read yet so that I can really get to books that I'm very excited for, that I still want to get to. And I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. There's probably going to be a lot of time lapses in this one when I edit it. But oh well, um, what can you do? I'm, I'm gonna have to, I think I, I recorded like two and a half hours of footage and I'm gonna have to bring it down to as short of a time frame as we can. So um, that's definitely what I will be doing. So thank you very much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make one video a week over on this channel. My other channel is three. That's why I was holding up three fingers. Yes, I have a beauty channel too, in case you're wondering. So if you wanna see makeup looks, and all that jazz, and when I hear me rave about eyeshadow palettes, 
I've got you there. So that's floating in dreams. So check that out if you haven't yet. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye.